Well, good morning and praise the Lord to everyone. We are delighted and excited to be able to come to you through this platform and we welcome you on to our live stream this morning. Yes. This is a day that God has ordained, has made, and we are glad and we rejoice in it. And so now uh, we're going to hear a few words from our pastor before we go on with the furtherance of this stream. Good morning, everyone, and I see you all coming on in the room. Thank the Lord for this wonderful day that he has made. As Pastor Carm has just said, welcome to Bethlehem Temple of Praise. I'm Pastor Jeff Richardson, and this is Pastor Carm Richardson, and we are so glad to be with here. Bethlehem Temple of Praise, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, still dealing with some sinus things, but God is, God is blessing us, and we have no reason to complain. We are rejoicing, and we're happy, but at Bethlehem, good morning, Sister Sharon Bass. Good morning. I see you all coming on. We believe in bringing help, healing, and wholeness through the love of Jesus Christ. We believe that is our mission and our purpose, and that is to bring help, healing, and wholeness through the love of Jesus Christ. Every member of BTOP should know that uh, by heart. They should have that stamped in their heart and in their mind because the, the, the love of Christ is not some warm, fuzzy feeling. The love of Jesus Christ brings strength. There's strength in love. Love is what held Jesus to the cross. It's because of his great love for God so loved the world that he gave. What does love look like? Love looks like Jesus on the cross. And so we are bringing <clears throat> health, healing, and wholeness through the love of Jesus Christ. And that involves sacrifice and giving in, sometimes even inconveniencing ourselves. Sometimes I believe we miss uh, the real heart of God and the passion uh, of the love of God toward not just good church people, but for the, the world. world. He so loved the world. That's love. Love extends itself to people that can't give you back anything for what you've done for them. They're not in a position to pay you. You know, what profits you to, 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 to lay down your, or to love those that only love you. But greater love hath no man than this than to lay down his life for his friends. And so, Thank the Lord for each of you joining us today to the members of BTOP, to our cyber family, those of you that come week after week and you join us. We are delighted. We are so happy. We're really happy. Um, and we love the fact that we have been able to go outside even of our church doors, as it were, through social media and uh, connect with people from out of state, all over, not just the Detroit uh, metro area, but all over this nation. And so we thank God for you. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you. Now, I need all of you to be praying and uh, still supporting as we, have, of course, you know, we closed on our building on Monday. Yay! Um, and, um, so we've got keys, and the next step is getting the parking lot in. Um, many of you know we, we, were, we were in Wayne before in the other building, and um, now that we are owners, we, are, oh, we, own, we bought a building, we're not leasing, the responsibility to keep everything up to, up to code is on us. So the city inspectors, you know, before you, while you're purchasing the building, uh, before, during the process, and even after, um, we have to be uh, up to code with the city of Wayne. Uh, because the building has been sitting for about three years, basically since uh, 2018, um, they're going through it with a fine tooth comb because everything that was grandfathered in that the church didn't, that the church that was there didn't have to do, uh, now that codes have changed, 
we as the new owners have to make sure that, that those things are accomplished, those things are done before they will issue us a um, occupancy, o occupancy permit. permit. Thank you, my mind went blank for a minute. An occupancy permit. And so we need our occupancy permit to have our first service. So one of those things is a parking lot. Now, God blessed us and uh, we're able, we didn't have to come up uh, with too much cash money uh, because the bank uh, increased our loan to cover that and the owners made a concession. Uh, uh, in other words, took some money off or gave us some money back so that we could do, uh, do some things. And one of those things is the parking lot. So it's going to take about a month for the par parking lot to be done because they have to dig out, they have to put in a, uh, a drainage system over there. So it's, it's very involved. You just don't slap some asphalt on top of the grass. You actually have to dig it out. It has to be graded properly so that water doesn't go, flow back toward our neighbors. It has to be done professionally. And so the Lord has um, hooked us up, give us, given us the hookup with uh, great business, I feel very comfortable and they will be they will start digging uh, on the parking lot this coming week and so the work is started will take about take them about a month to finish everything and so we want to do that we also want to put this is not included in that price we want to put a gate around our parking lot this is a time when we want to make sure that we're doing things right up front we don't want to half do if y'all catch me, we don't want to get to church and find out there's four or five cars on the parking lot uh, from people and we don't even know where they live. This is using our parking lot. We need to make sure that the parking lot is secure with gates and locks so that uh, people are not parking and using our parking lot uh, so that when we need it, it's available to us. So we're going to have to invest in a fence. Also, there's some specialized, and I know I'm taking a few moments, but I need to kind of bring you all up to speed because we've not been meeting corporately, and right now we can't meet corporately at the church, okay? So uh, there's some specialized cleaning that has to go on at the church. Um, you know, even, even if we had our occupancy permit right now, uh, there are some things that need to be done inside the church because it's been sitting so long um, there's some some specialized cleaning that we we have to pay for. Um, uh, this is something that's even beyond my scope of cleaning. There's some specialized cleaning that we have to to uh, to do at the church to make sure that it is uh, cleaned and disinfected properly for what was going on in there while it was sitting. And so, without going into a whole bunch of specifics. Uh, we're getting done what needs to be done to make sure that the building is safe for us, safe for safe for the pastors, safe for the members, and safe for anyone that would be coming in there. So all of that is 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 going to be happening uh, within the next uh, week, and then the parking lot the next month. So we're probably not looking at our first service. Uh, until probably sometime in November because all the parking lot has to be done before the cold season hits. So which we have to get right on that. And so, um, however, uh, after the specialized cleaning, after we get, because they left a lot of stuff in there that's just sitting, stuff that we can't use, stuff that's not usable. Um, and it's been sitting so long, so a lot of that stuff has just been sitting there. It's dirty, it's dusty. We're, we need to... Uh, Make sure that that stuff gets cleaned out so that we can bring our stuff in. So this is quite a, a task, quite a purpose uh, that we have uh, in our hands to do right now. Uh, getting the, the church cleaned out. Um, also making sure that all the electrical is up to code in the pulpit. We needed to add, we have to add some outlets. There's, there's, there's some housekeeping things that need to be done. We need to make sure that the uh, church is beautified and cleaned up and all the debris and trash, stuff that is old and unusable, is taken out and um, that we, uh, are, we prepare ourselves for um, the, great wonder, the great event that will take place when we walk in there. Um, 
Uh, don't want you to think that we don't want y'all coming in the building. No, it's right now it's not safe for everybody to be in the building. The building it just requires some specialized cleaning, and then um, um, we can we can we can uh, open it up, make sure that we have a day or two so that the saints can come and tour the building. But right now is not the time to tour the building. Okay, so. Uh, I know everybody's excited. You can't I, you can't be more excited than I am. I'm telling you, we've been we. This is quite a journey. However, there's some things that we need to do. Pastor Carmen, I love you. Now, I'm not preaching this morning. I have uh, in my commercial cleaning business. I also provide specialized services, and so um, I had a strip and wax job uh, that I was asked to do, and uh, that I accepted uh, yesterday. Uh, however, <laughs> when I accepted this. Um, um, it was actually for a time that was earlier. They wanted some added services. But yesterday was the first time in several years that I had been asked to participate in a, a, a church, um, um, I guess it was a, a gathering yesterday, uh, a multiple church gathering where they were doing some specialized training and I was asked to do a class. I didn't know my class was until the afternoon. Um, it started. It started at uh, nine in the morning, and they had three sessions. My session was session three, so I was at that conference all day. But then I, I had to, I had to keep two commitments yesterday. I had to do that, and then I had to do the strip and wax job, which had me out very late, and I didn't get home until after four in the morning. So I knew that it was going to be a setup that way. So I had Pastor Carm. Uh, ready, I said, Pastor Carmen. I didn't say Pastor Carmen. I said, baby, because I call her baby. I don't call her Pastor Carmen at home. She's Pastor Carmen to y'all, but she's my baby. I said, baby, I need you to cover for me tomorrow. And uh, my dutiful, loving, vivacious wife, uh, she stepped right on up. And so um, I know that God has placed a word into her heart. And I just want to thank you all for your prayers uh, for Pastor Carmen and I. As we continue to lead you, thank you, B-Top, for being the kind of congregation that allows us to lead you. Thank you for your support. Now, we need your support to, to, to talk about this, the live stream, talk about us streaming. Um, make sure that you are tuning in on Sunday. Make sure that you're sharing the message. Make sure that you're leading people to our Facebook page and our YouTube if they, if they use YouTube. We want to make sure that we have our, our good presence uh, so, um, on social media because we're going to continue this even when we get into our building. We're going to be live streaming, maybe if, if not the whole service, especially the word. And so um, uh, we begin to pray, prepare your heart and your mind uh, for how we are going to be coming back. We are working on our protocols uh, for safety. <clears throat> Um, there, hopefully all of you are vaccinated. Uh, if there are some of you that are prevented from being vaccinated because uh, there, are, some, everybody, there are some people because of uh, their immune systems cannot be vaccinated, we want to make sure that you are continuing to uh, prepare yourself to join us on live stream if you're not comfortable being in a group setting. But we are, um, we are definitely, definitely we're going to be upping our game. We may be having to use the upper level and the lower level. We may have to have a screen downstairs to help us to accommodate to so to make to make sure that we uh, are accommodating everyone that wants to come. But we're working that out. Uh, but isn't it wonderful to know that that we have this opportunity that God has blessed us? So, uh, with that, right before Pastor Carm comes, I do want to remind you that we. Uh, because we are, we are owners of the building now and, and the building is our responsibility, uh, there are the things that are happening now we have to pay for. The only thing that was financed was the church and the parking lot. Of course, we had to put a little something on with that. But now all these, all these other things we have to pay for. So uh, we've gotten, um, I think, uh, all the utilities are now in our name. Um, we also, um, AT&T, it's coming out to make sure that we have our, our wireless system up. You know, there's a lot of things that are going on from scratch. We've got to get our uh, the security. There's a security system there, but we've got to get our security guy in there to make sure that the system is working right. And then we have to pay for the monitoring uh, so that if somebody breaks in, the alarm goes off and they call us. 
all of that is going on now. We're doing all of that, all of those uh, functions that will provide security, make sure that the building is up to par um, and up to code. So that involves expenses. So we are right in the thrust of it. Our first mortgage payment is due uh, on October 19th. On October 19th, so uh, we're, we're, we're in it now. We are uh, owners of a building. We have these responsibilities, and we want to make sure that members of this, for members of BTOP, that it, it is our responsibility. It is within our budget. It is within our budget, but we must remain consistent. God has blessed us. Now comes the responsibility of making sure that we uh, are um, faithful and diligent and dutiful in taking care of our business. Um, what I like about it is it's not, it's not going to be a stress or a strain, um, but it's within our budget so that we can take care, of these, take care of those expenses. But in addition to that, especially now, these first couple of months, there are one-time fees, set up fees for things that we need to do to actually be a church. Um, you just don't show up at church on a building on Sunday and you know there's a lot of things that are involved in uh, getting things up to par so that we can do what we need to do minister as we need to minister and be safe secure and um, um, and respect the fact that a church building a structure needs to be maintained needs certain things to make sure that it's brought up we want to beautify that place and um, I'm looking forward to shining for God in that community and through social media. So, Pastor Karn, I'm going to go. My body is tired. Um, didn't get much sleep, but I, I could have let Pastor Karn just, just do this from her computer. But I said, no, baby, I'm going to set you up uh, on the camera. And I'm going to say a few words to the saints because I love you all, miss you all. But I am so excited about what God has done, what he is doing, and what he's getting yes, ready yes, to yes, do yes, yes. in us. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. And we have exercised our faith. And we now are right in the reaping season of what our faith is, uh, what our faith represents. It is the substance of it's the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. And now we see our faith revealed. And so, Pastor Carter, thank you so much for covering for Pastor this morning. God bless you all. I'll see you soon. All right, people of God, we're going to uh, say a word of prayer. And... Um, we're going to go right into the message. I see the people that are on. I greet you with the joy of the Lord, knowing that the joy of the Lord is our strength to the Faulkners, to the Halls, to uh, Sister Wainwright in sunny Florida, to the Scott family, Pastor Sister Hughley, God bless you, to the Castleman's, Brother Grant, I see you. We see you. Glory for his glory. I saw you come in. Mama, I see you. May God bless you. Uh, we're going to have a word of prayer. I'm going to say this about, and, and we're really talking about prayer this morning. Um, <clears throat> the word of God in Luke 18, 1 tells us that people should always pray and not give up, not lose heart. And then it goes on to tell a parable. And I hope that you, if you have not read that passage, I trust and hope and pray that you will read that passage because it is a blessing to you. Also, I want to acknowledge my good friend, Denise Wilson. Uh, we worked together for some years, but it's been a while since we worked together and God has continued to bless us and maintain our friendship and sisterhood. But listen, uh, if we ever needed prayer, if we ever needed to pray, people of God, it is now. Good morning to Sharon Johnson. I see you. It is now. It is right now. I hope that you have upped the ante on your prayer life. Going to God, not just for the petitions that you have, not just for your requests, 
but also for the requests of others because people are going through. Uh, Reverend Lori Woodmore, I acknowledge you and 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 Mother Whitmore Woodmore and um, I, I want to say uh, Aunt Connie, I acknowledge you, Brother Warren, I acknowledge you, and uh, if I don't call your name, it's just because I did not see you, Sister Baskin. I acknowledge you. May God bless you. I want to say to you all, God is in the prayer answering business. That's a real good place to say Amen. He is in the prayer answering business. And I want to thank him for answering the prayers of his people, the prayers of the righteous. Would somebody be interested in joining me in thanking him for answering? That's right. That's right, Brother Warren, for answering the prayers of his people because he doesn't have to do it, but he does. Glory to God. And so um, we thank him. And as we go to him, we take our petitions to him, our requests to him. We take, yes, he's faithful. Yes, he is. He's always faithful, ever faithful, always loving. We take our petitions to him. He is the one that can do something about it. All right? All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come this morning. And we come with thanksgiving in our hearts and on our lips. We want to thank you for your care. Thank you for your love. Thank you, O oh God, for the peace that you give your people that passes all understanding. That peace guards our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Thank you, O oh God, for helping us when we are weakened and when we seem like we cannot make it and cannot go on. Thank you for undergirding us and strengthening us. O oh Lord, thank you for bringing us to this September, this September of 2021. Thank you, God. You brought us this entire year. And even though we realize we are still very much in the throes of the pandemic, you are keeping your people. And for that, we say thank you you. For that, we glorify you. And for that, we bless you. Oh God, we give you praise right now for everyone that is on and everyone that will see this. We pray, oh God, that you would open doors for your people. Lord, some of us have been waiting for a long time, but God, we put our confidence and put our trust and put our faith in you. We know that you're able and we know that you're willing and we thank you right now. We bless you right now for open doors. Oh God, for answered prayers, we give you glory. Touch those that are sick and infirmed right now, oh Lord. We pray right now that healing virtue would flow through, flow to the people of God, oh Lord. Help us to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves, even with our lifestyle and our eating habits. Oh God, we pray for your touch. For those that are not feeling well, we pray for your touch right now. In the name of Jesus, comfort those those that are bereft of loved ones, those who are grieving, oh God, Lord, those who are, 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 are praying sickness away from their loved ones, comfort, oh God, give peace, give comfort in the name of Jesus, those that are going through various and sundry trials and tribulations, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would give your peace, in Jesus' name, we pray that you would take through, take us through, Father, as only you can. Help us to praise you despite whatever is going on. Help us to keep you as the author and the finisher of our faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you for B-Top. Thank you for every person, every saint, everyone that is connected, everyone that's supposed to be connected. Draw, Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus and your people give you glory and your people praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you to the Hughleys also. And um, um, we're going to get into the word of God. Uh, God bless you, Tim. I see you. We're going to get into the word of God. Um, we have been, we have been uh, in Philippians 4.13 for this entire year. And we have been preaching from that passage and 
I don't know about you, but it has helped me. Uh, I can do, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And it's interesting the way this is worded. It doesn't say God does all things through me. It says I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And I don't know about you, but I have been in uh, situations where I felt weakened, uh, uh, weary, and felt as though um, I did not have strength to go on. Is, is there a witness out there? I have, I have been in situations, God bless you, Brother Castleman, Sister Castleman, I have been in situations where I felt that my strength was gone. It was siphoned. Y'all remember when they used to siphon gas? It, it was, some of you all are too, too young to remember that, but uh, in L.A. they used to siphon gas with a, with a, uh, with a uh, water hose. And um, they had a whole way that they did it. I'm not going to tell you to do it because uh, gas is on the rise and I don't want to put you in a tempta tempting position. But, but I have been in situations whereby I felt that my strength had been siphoned. I felt that my strength had been uh, sucked out of me from the trial, from the problem, from the situation. And I tell you, just a prayer of, Lord, help me. How many of you know that's a prayer? Oh, that's a prayer. Lord, help me. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, get me through this. I know that there's a gospel song uh, called Get Me Out, Jesus, Get Me Out Today. But the reality is, it's a cute little song, um, but let me tell you what is the reality. The reality is this. Most of the things God does not get us out of right away. He will, though, take us through. Somebody say through. He will take us through them. He will help us to get through them. He will strengthen us to make it through. And one of the main things, one of the main things that helps me get through is prayer. Okay. All right. I want to read for your hearing 1 John 5. 14 and 15, and, and, and we really know uh, this by heart. 1 John 5, 14 says, This is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 15 says, And we know that if he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions or the requests asked of him. And so today we're talking about through Christ, I have the manifestation of my prayers. Through Christ, I have the manifestation of my prayers. And manifestation is a word that I could not get out of my spirit. I actually was uh, intending to preach something else and uh, when pastor asked me, immediately I started hearing manifestation, manifestation. And it let me know, the Holy Ghost let me know that this is the time for God's people to have manifestation. This is the season. This is the period. This is the the chronos, if you will, the, the time in history, the time right now to have the manifestation of our prayers. And this is the confidence that we have in him, not in our prayers, but in him, that if we ask according to his will, he hears us. That's enough to shout right there. 
He hears us. In other words, we have an answer. We have a yes stamp of approval. Why? Because we have asked according to his will. And it's just a matter of time. It's just a few more weary days. It's just a little bit longer before that manifestation comes to pass. Glory to God. Listen, B-Top, we know about manifestation because we prayed for a church building and on September 20th, God made it complete and manifested manifested it. This is a time I'm telling you of manifestation for prayers. When we pray according to God's will, he hears us. And so the thing for us to do is make sure that our prayers are according to God's will. Glory to God. Okay. All right. I don't want to hold you too long because I know this is a beautiful Sunday. It's going to be about 73 degrees in the Detroit metro area. And I know you probably have something else to do, but I'm telling you, this is the time of manifestation. This is the time that God has set aside in our lives at this time. Yes, right in the pandemic. With no end of the pandemic in sight. Yes, right in your situation. Whatever has befallen you, whatever has happened. Yes, manifested prayers. Yes, answers. I feel the presence of the Lord right now. Yes, answers. Yes, answers. Because you are praying according to his will. Because you know that he hears you. Because you have confidence in him because through Christ I have the manifestation of my prayers. Through Christ, I have it. How? Let's talk about how. I got three points and then I got some sub points. How do I have the manifestation of my prayers? Number one, by trusting God's process. Ooh. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. By trusting God's process. That's how. Now, <clears throat> in God's process, and I didn't make it up, it's throughout the scriptures, you will be uncomfortable. You're going to be uncomfortable. I see you, Deb. You, 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 you're going to be uncomfortable in God's process, but you have to trust God's process. You, have, you and I have to trust that God is taking us through a process or, and or a, ser a series of, uh, of things. There are things that must happen. There are things that have to come to pass. There is a process. God takes his people through a process. Most of the time, it's not just a suddenly. Now, there are some times, there are some times where it's a suddenly, it's an immediately, but the vast majority of the time, God takes us through a, a process and you and I have to learn to trust God's process. We already know that God's ways are not our ways. And his process is not going to be anything that we would have done or the way we would have done it. Why? Because his ways are not our ways. You're going to be uncomfortable in God's process. Yeah, you're going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now, 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 another thing you may be, we may be, uh, is embarrassed embarrassed. God's process may cause you and I to feel some embarrassment. I never will forget uh, when my son, our son went to prison and um, um, 
it was a very hurting thing for those of you who have had children to 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 sway to stray and to to become a prodigal and and go to prison you can identify it's a very hurting thing first of all when they get in trouble it's a hurtful thing but 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 you know our oldest son went to prison and we went to the sentencing and at the sentencing i was going through uh, just a sea of emotions and feelings. And I decided at the sentencing, I'm choosing not to be embarrassed. I'm, I'm making a conscious decision that I am not going to be embarrassed by the fact that my child got in trouble and is going to prison. I'm not going to try to cover it up. I'm not going to lie about it. If people ask me where he is, I'm going to tell them. That was a conscious decision. God bless you, Frida. And I did not. But in God's process, there are times where you and I are going to feel embarrassed. How do you think Moses felt leading one million men plus women and children and livestock out of Egypt to the Red Sea and there they were. Don't you think he was embarrassed? Don't you think he was uncomfortable? Don't you think uh, my other point under by trusting God's process is you're going to have uncertainty. Uncertainty. Why? How? You're going to have uncertainty in God's process because God doesn't show us or tell us everything A through Z. So there are going to be some things that you don't know. Okay. One thing that's going to happen that you don't know is when it's going to be over. <laughs> we don't know that. We have no idea. It's just going to take as long as it takes. Listen, we first saw the church that we just bought in 2018, around this time of the year in 2018. I saw it online. We went through 2018, 2019, lost our building in 2020, or at least, you know, they sold it. I say they sold it out from under us. Our lease was up, so of course it was free, free for them to sell. But it didn't manifest as ours in the natural until 2021. Okay. There was uncomfortability, there was embarrassment, and there was uncertainty. But ultimately, you and I have to trust God's process. Are you following me? Do you, do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Because you're going to go through a process. And the process is not so much for God. It's not for God at all. In fact, the process is for us. Woo! So that we can let patience have her perfect work in us. So that we can be submissive and surrender to God's way and God's timing. There's a whole lot of reasons that God takes us to, to takes us through the process. Number two, number two, this is how we get to the manifestation. Number two is by taming our frustrations. Taming, getting a hold on our frustrations. Because I don't know about you, but there are times where frustration can get the best of me. It can get the best of me. And I can't really, uh, uh, when I let my frustrations get the best of me, it's difficult for me to, to pray and get my bearings and really uh, 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 focus on on the goodness of God and focus on the promises of God when I let my frustrations get the best of me. And so we've got to get a hold of our feelings. And one of the ways you tame your frustrations is by giving those frustrations to God. He can handle it. 
He can take them. He wants them by telling God how you feel. Letting him know what God is all knowing. Yes, he is, but there's something about telling him in prayer. Lord, I'm frustrated, but I cannot. Help me not to let these frustrations get the best of me. I am, I am frustrated, but I'm also trusting in your process and trusting in your timing for this manifestation. Let him know how you feel. He created you and I with feelings. He knows that we have feelings. It's okay to let him know how you feel when you feel it. And when we feel frustrated, that's the time that you and I have to really focus, have to really force ourselves to focus on God's promises to us for the manifestation. Get a hold of your feelings. Your feelings, my feelings will get the best of me if I allow them to. We have a slang statement now, uh, I was all in my feelings. Mm hmm. Yeah. What, what it's saying is I was so frustrated. I was feeling some kind of way. What it's saying is I didn't like it. I was frustrated. But you and I have to learn to give those feelings to God, to, to tame those frustrations so that they don't run away with us and we mess up and, and get out of the process. Because there are some things that you and I can do to get out of the process. We don't want to get out of God's process. We want to trust God's process and go through God's process. And we have to learn how to tame, how to harness our ill feelings, our bad feelings. We've got to learn how to get a hold of our feelings and give those feelings to God by taming our frustrations. We show ourselves that our ultimate trust is in God no matter what. And people of God, that's what we've got to get to. We've got to get to the no matter what. There's a song that says, come what may from day to day, my heavenly father watches over me. Listen, we've got to be able to get a hold of our feelings, ask God to help us get a hold of our feelings so we don't stay in a blue funk too long. Okay. Some people call it a purple funk, pink funk, black funk, whatever kind of funk, so that we don't stay there too long. So that we don't, here's an old-fashioned word, here's an old-fashioned word, wallow in our feelings. <laughs> people, people my age and older know about that, that word wallow. I think about it uh, uh, with, with furniture, you know, uh, I was raised, you don't sleep on the sofa. If you're sleepy, you go lay down. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wallow all over okay y'all 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 don't know about wallow you don't wallow all over the furniture all over the sofa it messes up the padding and guess what i found out that's true it does Taming your frustrations means that it doesn't mean that you negate what you feel. It simply means that you acknowledge them to God and ask God to take the frustrations. All right. Manifestation means you're going to have some frustrations because of the process. But you got to learn, we've got to learn how to give those frustrations to God. And lastly, and I'm almost finished, lastly, totally believe. For the manifestation, you've got to totally believe. You've got, if, you might say, well, 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 I'm 60-40, okay? 60% believe, 40% doubt. All right, let's up the ante. Let's try to get to 70-30. Let's try to get to 80-20. Lord, I believe. Help thou 
my unbelief. We've got to believe that God will. We, I, I think most of us will agree. We believe that God can and that God does and get, that God has. But we've got to believe that God will manifest our prayers. Why? Because we have confidence in him. 1 John 5, 14. We pray in confidence that he hears us because we pray the word and the will of God. And so when we get our minds right and focus on our faith and know that our faith is intact, though our faith will be attacked, our faith is intact. It's in place. Totally believe. Believe. Only believe. Jesus said, all things are possible. Is there anything too hard for God? We can come back with a no. And, and a lot of times we come back with a no. There's nothing too hard for God. But that's for her or that's for him. But what about me? What about you? you got to believe for yourself that God will manifest the request that you have before him. You've got to believe for your family, for your children. You might be praying for somebody who needs salvation and seems like the harder you pray, the, the more heathenistic they get. You've got to totally believe. You've got to speak it over their life that they are saved and delivered and set free. You've got to totally believe that God is blessing me. God has my back and my front. I will not be in debt the rest of my life. God's going to open up a door. He's going to make a way. I will not have these pains all of my life because the healing virtue, I believe in the power of healing. Healing is the children's bread. I'm talking about total belief. You've got to really, it's a, it's a, it's a, I use this term we used to use as kids. You got to psych yourself up to totally believe. And you psych yourself up with the word of God over your life, over your situation, over your finances, over your body, over your children, over your workplace. Whatever it is you're believing God for, you've got to make sure that your faith is intact. Even when your faith is being attacked, you have to make sure it's intact, that you believe God. I don't believe what I see. I don't believe the report that is coming to me. I believe the report of the Lord. The report of the Lord says that his people have life and have life more abundantly. He's adding years to my life and life to my years. I totally believe that God is working it out for my good. I, to I totally believe that in a few short months, I'm going to see a manifestation. I'm going to see a turnaround. And people of God, I say that uh, uh, as preaching, and I also say that prophetically. There is coming, and I've been telling you for a little while, B-Top, you know I have. There is coming a breakthrough. There's coming a turnaround. There's coming a manifestation to your prayers. Oh, yes, there is. I want to give you, I want to give you the definition of manifestation and then we're going to close out I want to give you manifestation means this is according to dictionary.com manifestation means or is an outward or perceptible indication a materialization I like it I like it a lot a public demonstration Ooh, glory. That's what manifestation means. It is open. It's not covered. It's not hidden. It's, it's open for everybody to see, for your enemies to see how God made a way for you when they thought you were down and out for the count, how God brought you through. Why? You, you went through the process. You tamed your frustrations and your belief. Your faith was intact. Your faith was in place. Your faith, though it was attacked, your faith faith was intact and you totally believed God and then God thank you Jesus made a public demonstration a manifestation undeniable that it was him when the odds were stacked against you 
and you couldn't figure your way out no matter how hard you tried, but you trusted in God, confidence in him, and he brought it to pass. So your soul is not looking back wondering, I like the song, but you know how you got over. Because you believed God, you prayed and asked God, take me through and bring me out on top. Through Christ, I have manifestation of my prayers. Why? Because I pray according to his will and I have the confidence in him that he hears me. And I know that when he hears me, thank you, Jesus, I know I have the petitions the requests that I asked for him, asked of him. Several times throughout the Bible, the question is asked, is there anything too hard for God? The answer is a resounding no. Yes, even in your life, yes. When you and I get the will of God and pray his will, there is nothing he won't do for us. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I bless his name. There is nothing he won't do for us. We trust his process. We tame our frustrations. And we totally believe. Might be looked on as a fool, might be called crazy, but totally believe. What is it? Get it in your mind. Get it in your mind's eye. What is it that you're believing God for? Is it a material possession? Is it something spiritual? Is it emotional? What is it? You've got to go through his process and trust his process. And even though you might feel uncomfortable, uncertain, and even maybe embarrassed, know that God is working it out and the favor of the Lord is on your life. In fact, the psalmist says God's favor surrounds his people like a shield just like a shield. I see you, Michelle. God's favor surrounds his people like a shield. We're going to pray and uh, whatever you believe in God for, pray with me in confidence knowing that he hears us. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, the request before you that your people have given, that your people have asked. We pray right now, totally believing that all things are possible to those of us who believe. Lord, some of us have felt so much frustration and so much anxiety. We give those frustrations and anxieties to you. We give them to you, God. We ask you to touch us Relieve us, relieve us of those ill feelings. Help us, oh God, to get through the process in the name of Jesus. We thank you now. We praise you right now. We give you glory right now. We honor you and we reverence your power and your presence right now. We bless your name. In the name of Jesus, thank you for manifesting our request. Thank you for making a public demonstration. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you know some of us have been waiting a very long time, but we thank you for the manifestation of our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you. May the Lord bless and keep you this week. Don't forget Tuesday, Tuesday at 7.30, a scripture a day keeps depression at bay. We're continuing our series, um, and we will be talking about 
What do you think? On Tuesday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. I love you. God bless each one of you. And I look forward to hearing the reports, seeing the manifestation of our prayers. May God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, Brother Warren. You're welcome. Thank the Lord. May God bless you and keep you. Go with God. He's with you and you can make it in Jesus' name.